What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica. It's Tuesday, the 26th, I think. What's going on? Uh, here I am again, trying to get this camera shit together, this camera direction together, trying to figure out my life. So, um, we're going to talk about a couple of things, just some real quick things. Um, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share, and comment, and let me know that you stopped by. Um, today... Um, I, I did watch, let me tell you what I did watch last night. I watched half of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, which is back, and I will be reviewing those. And you know what I was thinking the other day? Yesterday, I was I was on, on Twitter, and I was just looking at the news feed, and I was just looking like, uh, somebody asked the question, are you traumatizing your news feed, or are you educating your news feed? And, you know, I, I feel like we shouldn't always either be educating or I don't, I don't want to be like talking about things that are so bad all the time. These things that like a lot of these cases and these the things that are in the news are just like, sometimes it's just so heavy. And I really think that it bothers me a lot. So that's the reason why I'm like, I need to do this every other day because I need time to get myself together speaking about these things. But anyway, so edu ed are you educating or traumatizing your 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 news feed or your or the people that you are around um in terms of your social media circles um but i'm like okay so i watched love and hip-hop atlanta um i watched half of it so i'll probably watch the other half today i was watching a live feed on youtube actually and then the the, the feed went out and then um i watched the second half of love and hip-hop miami um, I didn't watch the whole thing of that either. I watched bits and pieces of that too. Um, the only part that I really got to watch was Gunplay and his girlfriend who was just like, I really applaud her. She's just like, no, I'm gonna be by myself. I need to be by myself. This person is not respecting or honoring the relationship like I want to be honored. And I just can't, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm just not gonna do it. I'd rather be by myself. And it's so funny because yesterday I asked a question online was um do you feel more confident single or do you feel more confident in a relationship um more confident and i always when i since since i was a young young diva young diva out here in these streets um i always felt more confident when i didn't have a partner i, I for some reason i just always felt more like more confident. I wrote down some things yesterday. I wonder if I left them in my bag. Can we just talk? Yes. Um, but yeah, um, I can't find that paper that I had. Is this it? People feeling more confident when they're in relation, when they're out of relationships than when they're in relationships. Yeah. Um, I was just doing some research real quick and I just thought and you let you guys let me know if you feel more confident when you're in a relationship or out of a relationship you know no matter what it is or whatever how how are you in terms of your self-esteem and your confidence um, I've always felt again like when I was when I was by myself I was more confident I was able to focus more on myself I didn't care um, what someone else said about me. I didn't care what, um, I didn't have to compromise anything. I didn't have to, I could just, my any bad habit I had, it wasn't pointed out. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if it's like, you know, because sometimes when you get in relationships with some, with some people, they feel like they're supposed to be there to analyze your every move and and that turns into t some type of critical type of relationship where the relationship is always somebody talking down on you or correcting you almost like a child almost like they're rearing a child and it's very unnerving I, I, I can't I, I find that a lot of people enter into relationships that are similar like, like act like that because this idea of ownership that comes with relationships like you own this person um, and like, I just, I just feel like that is where a lot of people get into this idea. Like, 
of how they have to be in relationships and I don't know I just found like you know I was just reading online it's just constantly defending actions or inactions right um, being affirmed or um, being edified you know what I'm saying like I always I've you know what I always say is in a relationship no matter what type of relationship you're in if it's a friendship a partnership a romantic partnership uh, for any anything any type of relationship you're relating to somebody um i believe that you should be uplift you should uplift you should support and you should encourage and keep honest um a lot of people feel like keeping somebody honest has to be has to be has to be um coupled with being demeaning towards that person or the criticism is not it's not constructive it's destructive the criticism tears the person down instead of lifting them up like for instance i had a a meal prepared for me and i had a suggestion on how the meal could have been better without compromising another part of the meal there was something that was added to the meal and that it compromised the base of the dish. So it's like a, a bowl or, or a, a pot of broth with um, shrimp and bok choy and onions and um, mushrooms and what else was in there? Celery, I think. No, 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 it was no celery. That was the end of the bok choy. Um, what else was in there? But um, onions, um, basil all this stuff was put in there you know your your stock your 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 all of your stock and everything and it's all seasoned and smelling good and then you add you add rice noodles to your dish when you're making dishes like that you cannot make a dish and add noodles to it because the broth is so hot it's going to continue to cook the noodles and the noodles will become mushy so what you do is you add the noodles to the bowl and add stock to the bowl just like you would do a fucking top ramen meal you know what i'm saying so i'm saying giving constructive criticism i'm saying the next time you make this you probably don't want to put your noodles in the bowl because you're i mean your noodles in your pot because you're going to compromise your stock and your stock is the the, the makes the meal right um and that's constructive not saying you know what this shit don't taste no good you put this motherfucking these rice noodles in here you didn't fucked up everything you see the difference you see the difference so i think a lot of people when like in a relationship you i know i've got it on topic but like in a relationship there's somebody always going to tell you because you come from different places and different you know backgrounds truths experiences ideas and stuff like that and hopefully some of the things that brought you together you you share you mutually agree on but um let me let me clean it oh hold on i'm trying to clean this window back there i can't see shit out that back window all right um but yeah i just feel like i don't know i don't know what made me i'm just i got, got off i got off topic i was just trying to show like how in relationships people can get they can they can fall into this where they're always telling their partner what to do. They're always criticizing their partner. They're always, you know, showing what the partner did wrong. And that, you know, that is, that creates resentment and, and then conflict all the time. But anyways, I feel like people are more comfortable. I feel like I am. I feel like a lot of people, and I'm reading online, and I'm seeing a lot of people say they feel more confident when they're not in relationships. And I wanted to know, like, what is that about? But then I'm like reading here and it's like, you get to, you don't have to, you don't have to change your bad habits. Now that might, that's a bad thing. But when you had your bad habits, when you're around somebody all the time, they're like, man, why do you hit your teeth on your fork? That's a, that's a pet peeve of mine. I don't like when people hit their teeth on their fork and somebody have, somebody that I'm partnering with may not know that and they may not think that it's completely rude and poor etiquette and everything else. And every time you 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 put your fork in your mouth you scraping your teeth on your fork that shit i i want to stab you with the fork that's a bad habit but you won't know it's a bad habit until you get around a person that they don't they don't like it so it's like you can continue to your bad habit now sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad again your bad habits right 
Um, there's you don't have to compromise with anybody. You don't have to prove anything. Uh, there's less you're less confident when you care about the outcome. Um, like you know whether you've done something a project, whether you've tried a new hairstyle. You know if there's nobody that that's gonna say. Oh my God, that was really cute. Or or your meal was really good. Anything. It, I, I, I'm not looking for anybody to say anything nice to me. I'm not looking for anybody to criticize me. I'm just able to live and exist without the extra bullshit. I, I feel like I'm. that's just what it is. Um, I forgot totally what the fuck I was talking about. But I did write John Gray up here on the top. So we could talk about his ass. Um, but yeah, um, do you guys feel more confident when you're single or when you're in a relationship um but yeah a gunplay that's what i was talking about gunplay and that girl i don't remember her name but on love and hip-hop miami and she was just like i'm just gonna be working on myself and i if you i don't know what it is but i feel like when people are single they do have a lot of time to work on themselves do the things that they enjoy without the other person oh my god the street is so fucked up without the other person um you know saying anything about it anyway so john gray child boo oh no before that we want to get uh, yesterday i know i talked about elizabeth holmes and the Theranos scandal or scam or whatever i talked about that um and yesterday another news report comes out that this man he got over 122 million i want to know what y'all doing with this money and why after so much do you continue to just keep trying to take the money maybe because it, it was so easy to get and so since it's so easy to get you just want to keep keep doing it 122 million dollars from facebook and google by sending them invoices and facebook and google paying the invoices 99 million from Facebook and 23 million from Google. You wouldn't hear from me after the after the 23 million, after the 99 million from Facebook. You wouldn't hear from me. What? Are you kidding me? What how are y'all how are y'all doing like and now I'm in trouble cuz I sent them a fake invoice. He's forging forging contracts, putting um um um, letterhead, making fake letterhead, just all of this stuff, just scamming these girls. Let me tell you something. White folks scam on a level. This motherfucker was in Russia, I believe. Ram Ramsask. Rams. I mean, his last name is Ramasauskas. Ramasauskas. I don't know if that that sound like maybe Polish. Ramasauskas. Sound like Polish. Something might be Russian. He will be sentenced on July 29th. He's facing up to 30 years. Elizabeth Holmes is facing up to 20 years with her bullshit. She got, you know, how much money she took for 4 billion. Was it 4 billion and then 90, 90 billion? I don't know. I don't remember the numbers from yesterday. Our face is real swollen. I don't like it today. Anyways, oh, it feels so soft though. Come on, Jojoba Oil. Come on, bitch. All right. Um, What else is going on? Uh, but yeah, the guy, can you imagine 99 million in Facebook invoices? So Facebook, they pay their bills, obviously, and so does Google. And like people online were saying, you know, every time I've done some freelance work for Google, they send they, they send the checks on time. They need to stop fucking with people's monetization on YouTube. That's what they need to stop fucking doing. Um, you can't, you can't, like, I, I, the, thing, the thing about it saying that advertisers that's how they're getting you by saying you could talk you could say whatever you want to say but the advertisers you cuss too much advertisers are not gonna they're not gonna want to put shit on your on your video they're not gonna want to you know they're looking out for advertisers but they have i see ad ads on people's um videos for shit that don't even align with what their what their platform is about that prager you they're always putting that that shit is fucking that alt-right bullshit be on black folks fucking ads like i'm looking like how i mean i guess that's i guess that's their angle is like find the black youtubers and then let's run alt-right ads on their videos anyway 
Wall Street Journal reports that uh, the, that um, yesterday Michael Avenatti got arrested. Remember, we was talking about we've been talking about Michael Avenatti because he's been helping with the R. Kelly case. Now, hopefully, he's gotten in trouble for um, extortion against Nike and his co-conspirator, who hasn't been named yet, apparently is Mark Garagos. And Mark Garagos. He represents Colin Kaepernick, and Colin Kaepernick has a contract with Nike. How the fuck you you trying to extort Nike? And one of your one of your clients is a fucking works for Nike. Like I don't. But here's the thing: I don't even know why. I don't even know why we are acting like these lawyers be up to good shit. They are not to be trusted either. Like, <laughs> it's like you want them to do good, like with the Michael Avenatti when he came out with the thing. And I hope that this doesn't affect the thing with the R. Kelly situation. I hope it doesn't. I hope that, um, you know, Stormy Daniels came out and said that she stopped asking him to represent her because she found some shit that she didn't really like about him and didn't want him to represent her anymore. Bitch, she was losing. That's just it. You lost. So whether you want him to represent you or not, you was going to lose anyway. Um, but the, the thing is that you can't expect ethics and law to really go together like an, a lawyer. You really can't. And unfortunately, that's just what it is. And here is a proof on why it's that way, because they can do good in one and that's that's the thing that's what we're really gonna have to really realize with everybody in this world is like everybody has the capacity to do either or and everybody who and people who have power and influence and reach where are you what do you choose you choosing good or you choosing evil i mean that's just that's the basic thing i mean we could you can look at star wars what are you gonna choose luke what are you gonna do you're gonna choose this power that you have you gonna choose it for darkness or you gonna choose it for light? What are you gonna do with it? Or are you gonna be down the middle? You're gonna be a gray Jedi? What's going on? You understand what I'm saying? So it's like everybody, Michael Avenatti, he might be doing good for the R. Kelly situation. Over here, he's extorting Nike and Mark Garagos, who's also Chris Brown's attorney, he's also Jesse Smollett's attorney. Like, are you are they are they are they taking these attorneys down and trying to discredit them? The fact of the matter is they're still attorneys. You haven't gotten in trouble to where you've been disbarred so they can still practice law. And if they're going to do some good, if they do some bad, but if you put R. Kelly in jail, I don't give a fuck how much you take from Nike. They need to pay the people over there making them Jordans. That's what they need to do is pay those people. Shit. I mean, like, you're extorting Nike. What am I supposed to do? Feel bad for Nike? Girl, please. <laughs> Girl, please. Honey, please. So they're getting in trouble. So John Gray, I wrote I wrote here. I'm going to tell you what I wrote my notes. John Gray, his wife is, her name is Aventer. Aventer. Um, his coat, he took his coat off, I guess, you know, after the winter. The spring is coming. He's decided that he wants to wear a different coat. He wants to wear somebody else out. That's what it is. A coat is something that you wear. You wear the fuck out. You wear for a season and then you put it back in the closet and you get you another coat for the next season. He ain't slick. Emotional cheating, financial support, wife looks good on papers, going to leave his wife. How many women out there have heard a nigga say he's going to leave his wife or leave his girlfriend or he's leaving or something? How many? How many women have talked to a man who got on the other line with you or on the Twitter or on the Facebook or on the messages and says, I don't like my wife or a man say, or a woman saying, I don't like my nigga. He's not fulfilling me enough. He's not breaking my back. Motherfuckers be lying. Okay be lying uh, all the shit that y'all th these messages y'all be going back and forth that makes a motherfucker feel like he still got it that makes a bitch feel like she still got it everybody's talking to everybody what an emotional cheating is worse than the fuck wait not financial not also supporting this woman financially but then y'all y'all gonna get your fa your fat asses on motherfucking the real and sit up there and lie and her sitting up there clapping and shit.
hypocrisy, abuse, birthing him, covering her husband. Honey, first of all, let me tell you the thing that I that I that I see with that. He's a liar, he's a man. This is the reason why you don't put people in church. You don't you do not lift them up in a way that absolves them of human behavior. Natural human behavior. But the problem is you motherfuckers get on these on these in these pulpits and start acting like you're above people and start acting like you can talk down to people and then it's going to be hard to take advice from someone who is not actually walking the walk, who is not like we understand you're a man and we understand you're a woman and we understand you have needs and we understand that you get greedy and we understand that you know you might be attracted to somebody else but then you make a choice do i send this person money do i financially support them do i get into this emotional relationship with them i think an emotional relationship is probably a little worse than a, than a physical relationship for both man and woman because a physical relationship is like whatever okay but emotional where i'm sharing my vulnerabilities with you i'm sharing what makes me upset or what's upsetting me and you're lending an ear to me that's a little that's worse you're not going to your partner with your bullshit with your problems you're going to somebody else with your problems but you're going to somebody else with your problems where the person is going to feel bad for you and that feeling bad for you lowers their inhibitions and now you're able to now proposition them into having a physical affair i believe that he did cheat with her I believe he had a physical affair. And then you leaving her message talking about trying to make her feel guilty. I sold into you. Big, my nigga, you just gave me some motherfucking money. Relax. You get a new car every fucking time a new car fucking comes out. You gave me some money. You ain't broke. I sit up in the church too, motherfucker. I see the plate pass me, nigga. You ain't broke. So don't try to sit up here and leave me a message talking about you didn't. Di I didn't sold into you. You ain't making me feel guilty. You don't, you can't do that. Like what these niggas is out of control. Where's my notes here? John Gray, emotionally cheating with a woman, financial and emotional. You, you was supporting the lady. So you financially abusive too. Okay. Um, and then she's sitting up there on the real clapping and smiling, looking like a damn fool. Looking like a damn fool. She looked like she lost some weight too. Um, might be stressed maybe because she, I'm sure they eat very well. I'm sure they eat very well. Okay, I'm not doing this with you motherfuckers. I'm not doing this at all. Um, I'm sure they eat very well. What else? He allegedly told the woman that he didn't love his wife. How many motherfuckers have heard that from a nigga? Or a bitch. I don't love. I'm just with them for the kids. <laughs> I'm just with them because what? Oh, because they helped me out one time 20 years ago. I'm just with them because they've been good to me. Right. Girl, please. Um, they was on the reel. He leaving voicemail messages, trying to make the woman seem like she was. You know what they do. You know, it's always the woman's fault because a man will be a man, which is a, just an excuse for a man to do fuck shit and not be held accountable for his fuck shit that's one um she's forgiving him now she's not only forgiving him because i'm sure she probably gives him hell because she seems like that kind of person where she does all that smiling and kikiing and shit for the cameras but at in when the cameras are off when they're home alone that bitch is giving him hell she's not gonna leave him because guess what she's a pastor's wife and a pastor's wife does what nothing and gets what a lot of shit to deal with her husband's infidelities to deal with her husband getting people in the church pregnant to deal with her husband cheating on her with people in the church with the head of the choir board with the goddamn the, with the man who runs the fucking organ do you understand what i'm saying She's dealing with all that. She ain't leaving John John Gray. She's not leaving him. She's going to sit up there and laugh and clap like Hercules and do all that shit while, while he cheats on her. If she had any damn sense, she'll go get her a nigga. Now, now my thing is this. Why this idea of monogamy, if you want to be a man or a woman who wants to have multiple partners, go find you a partner who wants the same as you do not find you a partner who subscribes to monogamy and i oh 
always include television, film, entertainment, sports. I need to add church on there. If your man is a pastor or your woman is a pastor, I don't know why you go into these relationships expecting monogamy. This person has power, influence, and reach and uses that power and influence and abuses that power and influence and reach to to get other people in the church to warm up to them. Uh, you have a you have the nerve to put that woman in the same hotel as your wife? Like you out of out of control. You got big balls. You got big balls sitting up underneath that dick. John Gray, I bet you it looks like a goddamn baby carrot out here. That, that, that woman don't want, and then I, you want to make the woman like she's doing something wrong. She knows he's married. He does too. <laughs> His ass does too. Goddamn it! What the fuck? You can't. You y'all gotta stop letting these men get away with shit. The only reason why I, I this the only reason why I ain't going in on. An avatar. I'm not going in on her because I know she's staying because of that them, them checks. She's a pastor's wife, baby. She's riding around in a new car every every quarter. She got a new car. She ain't leaving that. If she had any sense, she would go get her nigga. And if they had any sense together, they would say, "Okay, listen, we gonna leave this church." This, see, this is why. See, this is where religion makes you. It makes you lie to your goddamn self. It makes you lie to yourself when you start worshiping what's in here then you then you'll be start being honest and truthful and you won't put it on the devil the devil made me do it or god it was god when you start taking personal accountability you can say hey listen uh, avatar you and i we're in this relationship we're going to leave this church but we can't we i can't do the monogamy thing the bible we we going to reference the bible and say hey listen the bible says that we can have more than one wife I have the ability, I could have more than one partner, I could have more than one wife. We have I have the ability to take care of all these wives. That's the only like you know, you know my theory about monogamy being for mediocre men. Mon monogamy is for the mediocre man because if Lot could have all these motherfucking wives, do you think the average bitch or the average nigga is gonna get the wives if Lot can take care of all of the bitches at the same time with all of the, the same thing? I don't know, I'm just using lie. I heard that Lot had a lot of wives in the Bible. All the motherfuckers had a lot of wives, so that you could excuse it, John Gray and Avenger Gray. You could, you could, you could, you could do it. You could do it. Just say it. If she had any sense, I wouldn't leave his fat ass either. I'm sorry, I wouldn't leave him. What? Are you crazy? I'm getting a new car. What? And he out here do your thing. What she should have done was been like, well, he gonna do what he gonna do. <laughs> And then that's it. He gonna do what he gonna do. Because everybody would have been shot. I'm not leaving him. That's my that I'm I'm a pastor's wife. You bitches know. Stop acting like stop acting like you don't know what the fuck is going on here. I'm getting my fucking money. If she had any goddamn sense, she would have a nigga on the side too. Oh, the sanctity of marriage. God damn it, that shit is fake. That shit is fake. You are asking for people to 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 be on a structure, a structure that was developed by humans. It, and and over supersede a biological thing that trumps everything. My biology trumps all of this shit on the outside. All this made up shit. All the shit that you gotta write down on paper in order to prove, in order to make legal. All that shit is out of here. You got how many wives? John Gray. They left. Um, she acting like okay it was only emotional dealing with addiction issues okay so the woman was dealing with addiction issues so she was vulnerable so he knew what he was doing he knew what he was doing he knew what he was doing I don't care I don't care I'm a man I was emotionally cheating no you was fucking that bitch too nigga um get gray allegedly told the woman he didn't love his wife we like again how many times has a motherfucker heard that so seeds into pursuing I sold seeds into you he was making her feel guilty. So you're pursuing her. She's not pursuing you. Y'all making it seem like the the woman. And and this 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 thing, and I know y'all not going to agree with me and may some of y'all may, some of y'all not. If I'm married, I I signed a contract, right? You, you can you need a license. I signed a contract to say that I'm entering into a partnership with this person. And according to our contract, we have agreed that we are going to enter into a monogamous union. This is not going to be a poly union. This is going to be a monogamous uni union. 
I've signed a contract. You and I have signed a contract to enter into a partnership where we say it's only going to be us. And you go to another person outside of our business and start and form another partnership with them. Are you telling me that that person that he went or they went or I went to make another partner with that they are responsible for upholding the contract that I signed with my partner. <laughs> Y'all. The pastor wife syndrome. I'm not mad at Av Avatar. I'm not mad at her at all. She gonna stay. You are a pastor's wife. Don't you leave that money, girl. <laughs> Don't leave the money, girl. Get you a nigga. And don't leave the motherfucking money. Keep getting the bag and get you a nigga on the side. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not. I'm not going nowhere, bitch. We gonna have to be with him together. He gonna have to split the money in two. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> I bet y'all thought I was gonna have a different take on this. I'm not going nowhere. Avenger, stay right there. You stay, stay your ass right there and keep get you, get you a car every four, every three months, every quarter. Get you a new car, bitch. Get you a new car, bitch. You ain't got to do nothing but sit in the front pew and smile and shit. And this nigga's out here fucking these, the, the members of the church. And these bitches are thinking they getting over. Girl, take his fat ass. Take his fat ass. I got me a nice little deacon. Little nice little who's breaking my back out after Sunday dinner, bitch. You had you a bitch in them hotel too? I had my nigga on the next floor up. What, what else is going on? What else is going on? Honey, don't leave them, Avatar. Don't leave them, girl. <laughs> y'all. Y'all bet y'all thought I was going to have a different take on that. I don't. I don't. I know he's a damn dog. I'm not leaving. Avatar, don't leave him. Don't leave him. John Gray, you ain't shit. Because you the one. You the one. You doing all the shit you're not supposed to be doing. I'm holding your ass accountable. Avatar, don't leave. Anyways, y'all. That's all I got to say about John Gray and 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 his cheating. He's emotionally and financially cheating on this woman he'd have known for 20 years. Child boo. He ain't shit. Let me put my shoes on so I can get so I can go inside and finish having my coffee. Um, I guess I could talk to y'all while I get my shit together. I'll get my coffee together. But yeah, so honey, I bet y'all thought I was gonna say something different. I don't know. I my ideas about marriage are really fucked up. Like, I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. I'm not against partnerships and unions. I'm not against none of that. You know, everybody wants somebody to acknowledge their journey, somebody to be there to witness their journey. Everybody wants some, some whether, you know, wants that kind of partnership, partnership as humans. That's it's natural. It's not natural to just have one. Uh, monogamy is an agreement, is an agreement, is a construct where we say as humans, because we know we're bi not biologically built like that. I'm going to agree. You and I are going to make a choice to agree that all that we're going to override our bio biological needs. We're going to override that and we're going to stick together. We're going to stick together forever to death do us part. Child, please. Get that insurance policy up, though. Um, what else is going on? I need to clean that chair. Um, what else is going on? That's it. That's all I had. Let me see. I can't. I can't connect anymore now. But the people's going to jail. The the lawyers. I don't know why y'all motherfuckers expect anything out of lawyers. What else is going on, y'all? Um, loving hip hop. Loving hip hop. Look at my eyebrows. They are a mess. I look like Frida Kahlo. Damn yeah, mess. I haven't y'all y'all wait till I get my damn my when I'm not depressed anymore and I get these eyebrows done and dye this hair. It's over for you bitches. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, let me go. It's been 35 minutes. I don't know if I'm gonna edit this video or not. I need to, I can't, I need to um I need to get my life together. All right, y'all. I have on socks. I normally don't wear socks with this, but it's cold. It's raining today. Anyways, y'all. So that's it. That's all I got to say. Tell me what y'all think about the John Gray situation. Tell me what you think about the lawyers. Are the lawyers getting in trouble for extorting um, corporations? And um, what else? I think that's it. 
I wanted, it was something else that I wanted to talk about. Who I wanted to talk about? Tokyo Vanity. Tokyo Vanity and her, uh, let me tell you something. I'm not, I'm, let me tell you something. Whenever, okay, I am cisgender, right? I'm a black woman and I have problems. I have a hard time making friends with cisgender black women who are heterosexual. I have problems making friends with them because a lot of them have these um, dormant feelings about homosexuality and um, I can't be friends with anybody like that because I just can't. That's just not, it just, I, I, I can't. I have backed away from people who I felt like you may not be homophobic, but you're a little anti-gay. Anybody that tells me they don't agree with homosexuality, I don't, you and I will never, ever, we can never, I just, I can't. And I find it hard for me as a black woman making friends with other black women because they have these dormant views about homosexuality where she is okay. It's okay for you to be gay. It's okay. Like, first of all, I don't need your approval and I don't need you to tell me whether or not it's okay or not. That's number one. But number two, you want you, it's okay, but you want the person to hide it. You be and saying that everything is so persuasive. Now, here's the thing. If, if Tokyo Vanity believes that you are born gay, if a child is born gay, a baby is born gay, and they're sitting in this world where everything that is considered quote unquote normal is heterosexual, heteronormative, right? Everything that's normal is heterosexual. Television shows, men and women kissing. How do you think the way that you feel when you see two men or two women on, on the screen kissing and you feel a little, some discomfort about it, how do you think it feels for a gay child, a lesbian child, or a child who does not, is non-conforming, doesn't, is not no non-conforming, and they're sitting there and they're watching a man and a woman kiss, don't you think that might make them feel uncomfortable? Don't you think that might make them feel like they have to hide who they are, who they are because they don't see images of themselves or what they see like two men kissing? Yeah, I I'm I like men, so I'm going to be kissing a man. That that makes sense to a child going through puberty who's, you know, questioning who might be queer, right? For you to tell somebody that it's okay for you to be who you are, but in order to make me comfortable, I want you to hide it. I don't want you to, I don't want you to be all out in the open with it. That's like telling me not to be a woman. That's like, that's telling somebody not to be who they are. And who the fuck are you to tell somebody not to be who they are, but you want everybody to accept what is not considered a normal thing in terms of standards of beauty? And you sitting up there? You don't fit standards of beauty, Tokyo vanity. So we could tell you your presence, this display that you're giving me, I'm not comfortable with it. I want you to lose 100 pounds. I want you to lose 150 pounds. Because what you're displaying, who you are, it's not normal. What kind of bullshit is that? But it's expected. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that she's a woman who says she's okay. You know what you're okay with? You're okay with getting your face beat. You're okay with getting your weave put in. You're okay with that. You're not okay with the fact that you don't want to see two men and with in, in intimate in intimate situations, you don't want to see two women being intimate with each other. You don't want to see it because it makes you uncomfortable. Why does it make you uncomfortable? For what? It doesn't have anything to do with you. How do you think a child feels? I'm telling y'all, y'all don't realize the things, the, the, the small things and, and what y'all need to stop doing is wishing, wishing gay children on anti-gay adults. 
I hope you don't have a kid who's gay because of your views. Why would you put a why would you put a child in a, a, an abusive situation like that? That is something that I'm very passionate about. I'm letting y'all niggas know if you have anything against any type of gender expression, cultural expression, anything against um, LGBTQIA, anything, you should not subscribe to me because I don't have those views. I don't share those views. I don't. If you have anything, you don't agree with homosexuality. We don't have nothing else in common. Nothing else. If you, if, if you one of those people who feel like you have to tell somebody to suppress who they are in order to make you feel comfortable, we don't have nothing in common. I'm not disappointed in her. I, It's a typical thing. It's typical. You, ha you have groups of women who come together and the commonality is their hatred for LGBTQ folk. Their commonality. The, it's a dormant Dis, distaste, hate, displeasure, uncomfortability, whatever the fuck it is. But there's a commonality, commonality there that some women, they come together with a common hatred for gay folk. Those kind of women, I see them all the time. I, I, you know, and it's so funny because just the, uh, the last group of people that came through that I that I that I was um, at at work that I was helping it was a, it was several black women in the group and I was like yeah because we were like around the same age kind of you know talking about current events and things like that but then I was teaching um I was teaching a course or a module on um, cultural diversity and ex inclusivity and we got we started talking about gender reassignment surgery and their faces. Well, I mean, it's okay, but you know, it's just not my thing. I was like, oh, see, I can't, I can't even fucking rock with you bitches. Like, I was just like, oh man, that, it really, now that, it's, it's, it's disappointing for me when it's like somebody that you like and then you hear, then they're like, you know, I really don't like that gay shit. I'm not really with that shit. You know, I mean, whatever, they could do whatever they want. I'm just not really, it's not, it's nothing for you to agree with. It's nobody, the, how would you like if somebody says, you know what, I really don't like you being with that motherfucking man. I don't really agree with it, but I mean, you could do it. That shit is stupid. I am not surprised by Tokyo Vanity. I'm not shocked. A lot of women are like that. They, 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 they see gay, especially gay men as an accessory, somebody to make them laugh, somebody to entertain them, somebody to do their makeup, somebody to manage them, somebody to style them, somebody to do their uh, hair. But when it comes to expressing themselves, they don't like it. It makes them uncomfortable. I don't like those type of people. I can't be around those type of people. Anyways, y'all, that is my time. I need to get I need to get in there. The card and went off, so it's time for me to go. Y'all have a wonderful day. Protect your energy. Take care of each other. Um, and remember, like in your relationships, support, uplift, encourage each other, and keep each other honest. Peace.